the movie opens in Metropolis where the city's beloved hero, Superman, is busy protecting his people. Since the Kryptonian is always willing to help others, his power, popularity, and strength are simply unmatched. People can count on him if they ever find themselves in trouble. However, it is also a known fact that whenever a figure like Superman becomes popular, his enemies dislike it. They try to do anything and everything just to bring him down. Like in this movie, the antagonist, Lex Luthor, dislikes Superman. Luthor hates the fact that despite having such incredible powers, Superman refuses to become a tyrant. Superman's selflessness of wanting nothing in return antagonizes him. Because of this, Lex believes that Superman must fall into eternal sleep, just as other gods do. Luther dislikes seeing Superman at work saving people and doing his best to save them. Moving forward, the movie begins with the depiction of a Superman poster showing him carrying two masked men. He appears to be sleek, powerful, and stunning. However, this doesn't sit right with Luther as believes that the Man of Steel should enjoy his reign for as long as he is Superman. After all, there might come a day when he might not exist anymore. So, in order to defeat the Kryptonian, Lex has something big planned against him. Unbeknownst to everyone, the criminal mastermind has been working on Project Applecore which happens to be an illegal earth mining operation aimed at tapping into the Earth's molten core as an energy source in order to power Metropolis. Elsewhere, Lois Lane, the very famous news reporter, tries to sell editor Perry White a story about Lex Luthor's phony charity scam. However, Perry has none of it. Since their news channel, The Daily Planet, has already been targeted by Lex once, the latter tells Lois to just write about something else. This causes Lois to be enraged and she storms out of his office. Soon after, Perry walks out of his office and advises his employee, Clark Kent, to be cautious on his foreign correspondent assignment. He then asks Kent to write a good story for the channel every now and then. Clark agrees and says his goodbyes to everyone in the office. After a while, he goes to Lois and her cameraman, Jimmy Olsen. There, he tells the two that he's going to Afghanistan and bids them farewell. However, Lois doesn't seem to care at all. She's busy in her own world. Because of this, Clark simply walks away. Meanwhile, Lois continues to feel useless as she is unable to expose Lex. Not just that, but deep down she is also upset about the fact that Clark has finally left the Daily Planet. The scene then shifts to Superman's Fortress of Solitude where the superhero seems to be very stressed. This is due to the fact that, despite his incredible abilities, he has yet to discover a cure for cancer. He tries really hard but it's simply no use. Upset, Superman tells his robot that he aspires to be more than just Earth's resident strongman. Just then, Lois appears from behind and questions the Kryptonian's decision to bring her to his very cold and desolate fortress. That's when Superman simply replies that he has brought her there so the two can be alone. It turns out that he and Lane have been secretly dating each other for about six months. The two don't want the public to know about this in order to keep each other safe. Meanwhile, Lex Luthor is determined to generate unfathomable power by tapping into the Earth's core. Project Apple Core is in full motion with loads of machines extracting rocks and minerals day and night. Inside a cave, Luthor's employees continue to criticize him for being so ruthless. They talk about how Lex will just rake in billions after they manage to complete the project with the whole of Metropolis also applauding him. However, just then, the workers run into some kind of trouble. They immediately call Luther who watches everything unfold through a camera. Suddenly, Luther's teams discover an alien spacecraft from which emerges a hulking gray-skinned humanoid monster. The monster which is known as Doomsday destroys everything in its path and eliminates all the miners inside the cave. From there, it heads towards Metropolis, eliminating anything and everyone in its path and wreaking havoc along the way. On the other hand, Lois is still adamant about knowing Superman's true identity. Despite being together for so long, Lois doesn't know anything. She only knows one name and one identity, Superman. Because of this, she feels very insecure and unwanted. After having had enough, Lois asks her boyfriend about his real identity, but Superman just refuses to respond. He goes on to tell her that he is concerned about her safety. If word gets out then people might try to harm her in order to get to him. However, despite the threat, Lois is adamant to know more about him. When nothing else works, she claims that he's doing all this because he's afraid to commit. Having no other choice, Superman says that his name is Kal-El. But even after saying this, Lois isn't satisfied. She wants to know more about his identity here on Earth, which the latter just refuses to say. However, just as he's explaining that they can't be seen together in public, Superman is informed of the presence of a massive, humanoid monster in Metropolis. Superman and Lois are both stunned to see the destruction Doomsday has caused. Nobody, no matter how powerful, can destroy this eliminating machine. Right then, Superman's robot informs him of the impending doom. Apparently, Doomsday has already reached Metropolis, destroying vehicles and houses. It has already massacred several people which causes Superman to believe that he should intervene. However, it is extremely dangerous. Scared, Lois tries to stop him but the Man of Steel simply says that he can't back away from duty. Superman then transports Lois to Metropolis and confronts the monster alone. 
That's when he discovers Doomsday to be extremely powerful. Soon enough, the two get into an intense fight which eventually causes the Kryptonian to bleed. Lois, on the other hand, summons Jimmy, and so the two of them immediately start taking photos and gathering information about the monster. Meanwhile, the Doomsday Machine and Superman battle to stop each other, but Superman finds it all the more difficult. Everyone in the city is extremely worried about him as it is the first time he has been unable to stop something. With unwavering determination, Superman does everything he can to stop the eliminating machine. He even goes as far as to fly him into space and then push him back to Earth, where the monster eventually passes away. Superman finally succeeds in destroying Doomsday, making him no longer a threat. This, however, has a massive effect on Superman, who collapses in Lois' arms. He's unresponsive. Sadly, he passes away which makes Lois sob in grief. The entire city is shocked that their Superman is now gone. There's no one to protect them from danger anymore. Meanwhile, Clark's mother collapses from her chair when she finds out that Superman has passed away. It is finally revealed that Clark Kent was actually Superman's real identity. However, nobody knows about this, not even Lois. Soon, a funeral is held for Superman which gets broadcasted everywhere on Earth. All the citizens of Metropolis come to the funeral and pay their last respects to their hometown hero. During the funeral, Perry consoles Lois who happens to be a wreck. Just then, the latter notices Clark's adoptive mother Martha grieving privately. The old lady pays her regards and finally walks away from the Superman memorial. This causes Lois to doubt herself. She starts putting two and two together. Clark is missing and nowhere to be found and Martha is here sobbing for Superman. This all seems very strange. Because of all this, Lois is almost certain that Clark is Superman. When Jimmy arrives at the funeral, a man present there tells him that his last photos of the Superman were a tragedy. The man turns out to be none other than Damon Swank who happens to be the publisher of Glamour magazine. Apparently, he is present there to approach Jimmy with an offer. Meanwhile, Lois continues to grieve for Superman. Soon, she sees Lex Luthor and is furious because the latter very openly despised Superman. She's confused to see Lex paying his regards to the deceased Superman. After the funeral, Lois travels to Smallville in order to visit Martha. She wants to share her grief over losing the same person. When Martha asks about Afghanistan, Lois sadly says that she knows about Clark being Superman. She then goes on to talk about how the two were so in love, but now it's like the whole world has crumbled for her. Martha starts to feel bad for Lois and so she invites her in for coffee. On the other hand, Jimmy Olsen agrees to Damien's offer and leaves the Daily Planet. The world starts to go back to its dystopian self with no one to protect it. When Lois finally goes back to work, she notices that Perry White has resumed drinking. She tries to stop him and tells him that Jimmy leaving won't have such a bad impact on them. However, this has no effect on Perry whatsoever. Elsewhere, Lex Luthor ends up shooting his secretary in order to cover up any leads to Project Applecore. That very night, a psychotic criminal known as the Toyman threatens to throw a school bus full of children off the ledge of a high-rise building if the cops don't back down. In order to get his point across, he uses his mechanical spider to tilt the bus even more toward the edge. That's when Lois sneaks her way onto the roof to get as many children safely out of the bus as she can. Unfortunately, Toyman notices this and pushes her over the ledge, causing Lois to fall along with the last child inside the bus. Surprisingly, the two are saved and safely brought to the ground by a very familiar sight. Superman, now resurrected, is back and ready to protect the city of Metropolis. After saving Lois and the children, the superhero goes on to destroy the mechanical spider. He then delivers Toyman to the authorities before flying Lois back to her apartment. When the latter asks him how he's back, Superman simply responds that he doesn't really know. Lois then kisses him, but the Kryptonian responds to her as if they were meeting for the first time. This leaves Lois confused. Superman soon flies away and returns back to Luther's base where he gets beaten up and tortured. It is soon revealed that the resurrected Superman is indeed a clone created by Luther. Lex was successful in doing so because of the DNA he had extracted from kal -El's samples. It turns out the real Superman is actually under Luther's control. After being removed from its tomb, the real Superman's body remains in a stasis chamber in the LexCorp laboratories. That is until one of Superman's robot servants steals the body and uses the fortress Kryptonian technology to bring him back to life. Soon enough, Lois starts to get suspicious about Superman as well and starts investigating. While Lois is still perplexed by Superman's reappearance and Clark Kent has yet to return to his desk at the Daily Planet, the clone Superman learns from a televised newscast that the Toyman murdered a four-year-old girl at a daycare center where he held children. Hostage. Furious, he walks over to the police station and grabs the Toyman, flying him high above the city before letting him fall to the ground. The impact causes him to pass away instantly. Everyone is stunned to see this while the clone Superman flies away, completely unconcerned that he has eliminated a criminal in cold blood. Seeing this, Martha and Lois are both now certain that the man before them isn't the real Superman at all. Soon, the clone Superman continues to get more and more dark by the day. 
he threatens the police and considers himself to be invincible. When Lex hears about this, he yells at his clone and provides him with a list of potential rival companies that may have stolen the real Superman's body for personal gain. However, the clone Superman tosses the list aside and uses his X-ray vision to peer inside his own head. That's when he discovers a tiny lead line ball of kryptonite implanted within his brain, which he quickly extracts with his heat vision and a pair of scissors. Later, Lois meets with Lex Luthor in his office under the guise of leaving the Daily Planet for good. The two start talking and soon, Luthor begins flirting with her. Lex then kisses Lois, who takes this opportunity to drug him, knocking him unconscious. She and Jimmy then proceed to go through his files and discover his genetic research laboratory, where he happens to be harvesting thousands of Superman's clones. He is doing so in order to patrol Metropolis under his singular control. Just as Lois discovers this massive secret, Luther awakens from his drugged coma and threatens to eliminate both Lois and Jimmy. However, that's when he is stopped by the active Superman clone, who then goes on to destroy the entire laboratory and all work done there. Lois and Jimmy then take this opportunity to run away. Now sensing that he's in danger, Luther flees to his special room which is complete with red solar lamps and kryptonite gloves. He expects to defeat the clone there. However, the clone doesn't enter the room at all. Instead, he seals the room with Luther inside and throws it down to the ground with such force that it cripples Luther. During the real Superman's recuperation in the fortress, his robotic servant informs him of the clone Superman's brutal attack on Luther. Recognizing that the clone must be stopped despite his own diminished strength, the real Superman wears a special black suit capable of absorbing yellow solar energy and arms himself with Lex's kryptonite cannon to even the odds against his clone. As Lois and Jimmy watch the clone Superman use his heat vision to destroy the National Guard's tanks, planes, and weapons, Jimmy notices a black-clad, long-haired person resembling Superman confronting the clone on top of a building. The clone Superman attempts to calmly inform the real Superman that Metropolis is now under his protection, hoping that he will back down. However, the real Superman doesn't agree with that and fires the kryptonite cannon beam at the clone, who instantly dodges it. He then knocks the cannon out of the real Superman's hand. Soon enough, the two engage in a long, intense battle across Metropolis which eventually ends at Superman's memorial. While the two superheroes are busy fighting, Lois retrieves the kryptonite cannon and fires it at the clone Superman. Unfortunately, the clone quickly destroys it, leaving only the kryptonite cartridge intact. The real Superman then inserts the cartridge into the clone's bodysuit and ignites it with his heat vision. This causes the clone to be covered in a dense cloud of kryptonite, eventually eliminating him. Once the danger subsides, the real Superman assures Lois that he has risen from the eternal sleep by kissing her in public. Superman and Lois believe it will take some time for the public to trust him again since the clone had done a lot of harm to his reputation. However, just then, a small boy runs up to them and cheers him on, convincing them otherwise. When everything is over, Superman and Lois stay together in her apartment. They're now publicly dating and are very happy with one another. The latter finish some of her work and turns around to see Superman fresh out of the shower with his hair trimmed. However, much to Lois's surprise, the Kryptonian then puts on his glasses, revealing himself to be none other than Clark Kent. This makes Lois jump in excitement as she rushes towards Superman and kisses him deeply. With no secrets left anymore, the couple continues to love and cherish each other. Towards the end, Luther is seen in a hospital ward with a whole lot of bandages wrapped around him. All sorts of contraptions surround him since he barely survived. It seems that he has only recently realized that the Man of Steel simply cannot be destroyed. However, Lex is determined to not give up. He will come back, more powerful than before. 